think in terms of can you know like um multilateralism one thing is becoming more obvious is that a lot of the issues that we face today uh, are really transnational in nature you know with um, we talked a lot about hybrid threats and all across and non-traditional security threats during this forum in the past few days and it's really clear that in your opponents today they are working cross borders so it's really ineffective for uh, for countries to stay with just domestic policies with just bilateral uh agreements with regard to security frameworks on certain threats like cybersecurity and all because it goes way beyond that so if you just focus in your own boundaries you ha- you leave a lot of loopholes for well you know evil intenting intending people to 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 manipulate so i think with that all the more it's important to really make um government leaders as well as general public to believe in the need for greater multilateralism in a variety of aspects and i think with in order to do that because you know there's also rise of populism and also nationalism in a lot of different countries today and i think you have to give uh, to to be fair to people who believe in those ideas. It's also because with globalization, to some point, some people have been left behind. Yeah. So, what I'm thinking is for us to be able to enable better multilateralism going forward, uh, whether it's at the senior or youth level, we need to start by empowering the people from within our nations as well. It's about educating the general public about um, what is the relevance of the other parts of the world to yeah. who we are today you know why is it important that we help our neighbors why is it important that you know even though maybe we are really advanced we need to take into consideration someone else's um concerns for example like in asia maybe ukraine is really far away but there's a lot of repercussions with regard to what's happening in that region to you know another region that's like thousands of kilometers you know back back in asia so one is educating people about it but it's not enough just to educate you need to empower the people to do it so in our policies and all we also need to think about how do we then ensure better inclusiveness to, so that people don't get left behind yeah. and how do we empower people to engage multilateralism because a lot of times you can be working you know you ha- everyone has their very busy nine to five or nine to i don't know nine, in, in china they have like nine nine six right <laughs> <laughs> like really busy jobs so but with all of that, how do you empower people to still be, you know, get informed about different matters across, like, you know, foreign policies? Uh, how do you show them and, and make it easier for them to contribute to, you know, um, kind of connectivity or, or partnerships at the individual or organizational and even national level? So I think that's... Um, really important as well and of course i think we also talked about it a lot about um in in during our discussions in the past few days which is on top of those you need to enable as well not just through education but the the logistics and the the infrastructure must be there you need to make it easier for people to get visas to go somewhere (laughs) right because i mean you can have a really good scholarship program but if the visa is you can't give the person a visa then the person can't benefit anyway so i think all of those needs to be in place Mm -hmm. to really then enable better um multilateralism between nations as well you know at, at both the youth and the senior level yeah yeah i think it's uh it's an important it's also beyond countries working together even within countries i mean different ministries working together Mm -hmm. right i mean you have education ministries pushing for mobility mobility programs etc uh but those are only depend that those are dependent on on ministries that issue visas and embassies in the other countries right Mm -hmm. so so all of these different institutions need to work together more closely as well and we've also seen generally how powerful are those exchange you know programs have been where people initially may not think much about a country or a region and go there to study for a couple of years and then suddenly you know they become like expert in that region and all because they just fell in love because they understood the concerns of the people there more so yeah i think that is yeah 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 the value of mobility i think is i mean even even an event like Mm. this is a i would say is a short-term mobility experience and 
I mean, as as you said, Annabelle, this is your first time in Europe, mm. and, and I know for a num- number of others, it's, mm. it was as well. And and that opportunity that that we've been able to support you guys with has been so great. But mm. more needs to just be done. Just at one more point as well, because I just recalled something that was brought up during yesterday's breakout discussion. There was this. Um, you know, the thing about more people-to-people connectivity, that can actually become so powerful that it helps overcome some of the schisms that prevent real movement at the higher, you know, government-to-government level kind of yeah. thing because some countries may want to collaborate, but they have so much historical baggage yeah. that makes it difficult. But when you have cultural exchanges and the people really wanting those exchange, you know, when it's happening at the grassroots level at a very spontaneous yeah. level it's hard to stop <laughs> yeah 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 and i think it's it also is a generational thing right i mean we it's we have a group of young people who've all come together for this event specifically who wanted to overcome those in some cases overcome significant political differences between mm-hmm. different countries or, or or historical historical baggage as mm-hmm. you said um but the willingness is there i yeah. think especially from young people Okay, we we maybe wrap it up with with one last question um, of of what do you want to see more of in the future? What are your hopes for for youth in multilateralism, for more forum, more events like Young Indo Pacific Forum or future editions of Young Indo Pacific Forum? Any any dreams, hopes, wishes, visions, Anurban? Well, certainly there are a lot. You know, uh, we could talk about our hopes and dreams <laughs> for the next edition. All day, you do a whole podcast all day. <laughs> on it. What we want the youth from our two regions to do together, it's, it it would be. Uh, uh, but I would anyway. I would like to summarize uh, my my emotions here t- for for both of you. Uh, I, I I feel uh, I feel uh, very connected to what many many uh, decades ago someone from India. Uh, 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 who is considered a national icon for our youth. He was a monk, he was a scholar, he, he, his name was Swami Vivekananda. And he, he told the youth back in the day when India was suffering under colonial rule that if you set your mind to something, uh, you can achieve it. Arise, awake, and stop not until the goal is reached. Therefore, our goal is not reached, therefore we will not stop till it is reached. I believe that uh, in the coming days, I hope to see uh, uh, organizations such as ASEF, such as CAS, and and more organizations probably joining hands with you. This is my my call. This is my urging through this uh, this podcast to all such organizations that please join hands with us. Please uh, provide more platform, more space for uh, genuine youth voices from uh, our region in Asia and Europe to come forward to put their views. Because we live in such uh, times of unprecedented turmoil, yeah. the democratic order is under under threat. Uh, in our region itself, we face so many challenges, uh, and we discuss some of them. The theme this year of the Young Indo Pacific Forum for some of you who might be just joining in was hybrid warfare. We discussed uh, hybrid hybrid threats such as in the cyber domain, in climate change, trade, uh, security in the Indo Pacific. And you saw the panel uh, panel discussions. You see the kind of concerns we have as youth today, yeah. because we we know that these are issues we will have to keep uh, tackling with in over the coming decades. So I hope we can keep building this discourse, probably keep refining the kind of recommendations, very strong recommendations that we made this year. For next year, I hope I do hope you come to Asia. I we I do hope that we get to host you as well, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope that. Um, we keep moving our discourse forward uh, on how to involve the youth because on the first day itself at the press club Brussels, we had a youth roundtable where uh, the organizers were kind enough to include us as panelists. We shared our our experiences from the regions uh, as to how we believe we can involve more youth in decision making. So probably next year as well, we uh, I hope to see you creating more space for that. And I hope that uh, very soon we will, uh, you know, you talked about schism, you talked about, you know, uh, nationalism, ultra-nationalism probably, uh, which hampers this kind of cooperation. Maybe uh, us youths leading and co- coming forward, uh, maybe that will change it. Maybe we'll realize that we converge more than we diverge. Exactly, exactly. You said it so well. <laughs> <laughs> No space, right? No space. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I'll just add a bit to what Anna Brown said. 
on top of just yous coming together, definitely I would love to see it happening in Asia as well because, I mean, this year we got the European perspective, right? And next year I think it would be a great experience for our European friends as well if, you know, we could end up somewhere in hopefully exotic <laughs> maybe <laughs> in Asia. And, and, you know, I think that would really enrich the program a lot more. Yeah. And um, another thing is beyond just a lot of all these youth uh, forums, which uh, is start really starting to grow in numbers and skill now. I mean, we could go a lot more, of course. But on top of that, I think one thing that would really strengthen the discourse would be to have a lot more open uh, platforms for open and honest conversations between not just with between youth, but actually between youth and policymakers, and hopefully not just you know short one hour sessions like we had in mm-hmm. the youth summit yesterday. Where hopefully you know we can have a bit more time at least. Yeah. So that would really help balance the you know the thinking about policy making and all because um, to give all our you know hardworking policymakers some real good credit, they they work really hard on writing those policies and there's real trade-offs at stake for them as well so sometimes as as youth i think you know it's easy because we're not really setting the policies <laughs> to some extent you know we can say things that are a bit more ideal and mm-hmm. of course we would also try to balance so i think this kind of open and honest discussion would really yeah. help to um improve the credibility of both parties and also then you know it's a mutual thing so it improves the use understanding of policy making and it also helps the policy makers um, create more inclusive and um, good policies in the longer run so yeah yeah, yeah I think that that's such an important point uh, like more sustained dialogue yeah. right not just yeah. just a one hour session Correct. just more continued conversations yeah. and and um, policymakers to to really take on board the valuable input yeah. of young people i mean even like regular you know because policymakers they have working mm. committees and working teams yeah. right so even if every say twice or thrice a year you ha- or even every quarterly hopefully you you in those working committees you know you just involve some youth representatives here and there i think it would really help and reach yeah. conversations for sure for sure i mean one of the one of the things that was it was included in the video message that was delivered today was uh, that young people will suffer the consequence of inaction, Mm -hmm. right? Therefore, young people's voices need to be included Mm. and input needs to be, have action taken on following conversations. It can't just be the conversation and that's it. Mm. There needs to be action afterwards. Certainly, I think I agree with you, Freya, because... Even on the first day, I think we talked about this. We are sitting on panels, on youth councils. We are founders. We are trying to do so much. We have come here to Brussels. Uh, but ultimately, if uh, this doesn't lead to actions, you know, uh, if we do not deliver, you know, on actions, uh, these recommendations would just remain a PDF file. And that will be heartbreaking. Given the kind of effort we've put in, we know uh, how much uh, effort has been put in, how much emotions as well. You know, we, ha- we have, I think we have, uh, it's, these, are, these are not just technical uh, issues for us. Mm-hmm. Security in the Indo-Pacific may be an academic uh, topic of interest for some, but for us it's a, it's a, a real life, it, a real life um, uh, issue. It is, the, it is an existential issue. It, uh, trade is an existential issue. Sustainability you know, many communities uh, in the Asia-Pacific region, you know, you know uh, the Pacific Islander nations, they face an uh, mm-hmm. existential threat uh, mm-hmm. if we do not act on climate change. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, uh, I believe uh, these recommendations, they represent the collective voice uh, of, of our youth from both of these regions. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I, 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 I urge, uh, you know, our, our leaders, our policymakers, since we are th- not there yet, apparently, it will be a few years, <laughs> <laughs> so as for now I, I, I would urge the policymakers in charge to really pay heed to our voice mm-hmm. as we saw this morning at the EU EU ASEAN commemorative summit our, our video our, our video communique was played there mm-hmm. so I hope uh, up to after this video is played I hope they also you know take up on those words yes exactly yeah here for more partnerships more collaboration 